The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Oil, that wonderful salad and cooking oil, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Have you ever tried popping corn in Kraft oil? Believe me, it's the easy way to fix delicious popcorn. To prove it, the Kraft folks will give you a free package of popcorn when you buy Kraft oil. Wrapped around every bottle of Kraft oil is a handy package of Jolly Time popcorn, enough to make three quarts of the fluffiest, tenderest popcorn you've ever eaten. Get your free package of popcorn tomorrow when you buy Kraft Oil. Well, there are folks who like the kinfolks for neighbors, and there are folks who think the kinfolks should live 40 miles away. They just want to see them when they want to see them. And Mr. Gilsey likes his niece and her husband right next door. Of course, it gets confusing sometimes, like when the mailman leaves mail in the wrong box. Has the mailman come, Bertie? Yes, sir, Mr. Gilsey. I just heard him drop something in the box. Well, I'll take a look. Yes, sir, there's something in there, because I just heard him blow his whistle and flip the lid. Well, quite a stack of letters this morning. Yes, sir, it's getting close to the first of the month. The mail's going to be heavy for a few days. Yeah. Might as well start at the top, I guess. You read them that fast? Well, I'm an executive, Bertie. At the water department, I open all the letters at once and then read them. Yes, sir. Then run for your checkbook. (laughs) Yeah, let's see what this is about. Dear fellow consumer, this is to inform you that we find it necessary to increase our rate. Who's increasing their rates? The envelope says the water department. Oh, my secretary didn't have to send me one of these. File it in the incinerator, Bertie. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, better run through these in a hurry. Now, let's see. Dear sir, we have your letter of the 20th and are pleased to hear that you contemplate an early trip to Center City. Well, that's not... Wait a minute. I'm not planning any trip to Center City. No, sir. You know, what else does it say? The disposition of this property is so urgent, we advise you to come at once, prepared to make a down payment. Ooh, what is this? I don't know, but it sounds like a good deal. Oh, didn't look at the heading, Bertie. This letter's addressed to Bronco. Well, that letter should have gone next door. I'll take it over to Miss Marjorie right now. Yeah, wait a minute, Bertie. Wait a minute. I wonder why they didn't tell me they're thinking of moving. Oh, they wouldn't move without saying something to you. That letter's probably about something else. Of course, I don't want to pry into things. On the other hand, I have a right to know if my niece plans to leave town. Yes, sir. Hey, what's going on? Hello, Leroy. What's going on? Mr. Gillespie's reading Mr. Bronco's mail. Yeah? Well, by George, this doesn't look right to me. Reading his mail doesn't look right to me either. (laughs) No, my boy, you know how close our two families are. This is a big decision they're making. They always come to me for advice. If they don't, you give it to them anyway. (laughs) Well, oh, (laughs) this is different. Now I understand. What do you understand? Well, I didn't mean to peek at the rest of the letter, but I'm glad I did. Bronco's buying property for a client. Well, at least you know. <laughs> I did it! Yeah, all right, Bertie. Morning, Bertie. Morning, Mr. Bronco. I'd like to speak to Mr. Gillsleeve. Yes, sir. Come right in. Oh, ditch the letter. I will not. I'm open and above board. You're wide open. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy. Hi. Well, come in, Bronco, my boy. How's the little family across the way? Everybody's fine, thank you. I thought I'd find you at home, since your car's parked right in front of my driveway. Oh, you want to get out, do you? Well, I could drive through the back of the garage into the alley. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bronco. But the noise of splintering lumber might wake the twins. (laughs) Bronco, you have a great sense of humor. He has to. <laughs> yeah, this is can day, you know, so I put our cans out in the curb to be picked up, and I didn't want to park my car in front of the can. No, the can man might pick up your car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leroy. Uh, you 
aren't upset, are you, Bronco? Oh, no. I don't mind if they have a little trouble picking up my cans. <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of that. I'll go move my car. And while we're on the subject, Mr. Gildersleeve, didn't you wake me up this morning pouring some of your cans into my can box? Well, your box wasn't full. Mine was overflowing. <laughs> I suppose I should have taken your box out to the street. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. It was a little heavy, but Marge and I managed it. Sorry, Bronco. Well, that's all I had to say. Just a neighborly call. Oh, wait a minute, Bronco. You got a letter here. I have? Oh, yes. It came this morning. Uh, it's been opened. Yes, I want to talk to you about that. About how it happens to be open? No, about what it says inside. Please. <laughs> Please do. Then I won't have to read it. Oh, brother, this is going to be brutal. Of course, I opened it by mistake, Bronco. Oh? And I was halfway through it before I realized it wasn't for me. Oh. For a minute, I thought you and Marjorie were buying property in Center City. It's for a client of mine, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, I know now. Yeah, I almost forgot you're in the real estate business. Of course, I knew you wouldn't move Marjorie and the twins without consulting me. <laughs> Well, I'm in a hurry if I may have my letter. Oh, yes, indeed. Excuse me. Here you are. I'll be on my way. You one minute, Bronco, and I'll move my car. Never mind. I'll just drive to the garage. <laughs> Gee, Bronco must have gotten up on the wrong side of the bed. George, I got talking to Bronco this morning and forgot to have my second cup of coffee. You think I'll stop and have it with Petey? Hello, Petey. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? Well, I thought I'd join you in a cup of coffee. Then I doubt if there's room in that cup for both of us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Petey, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I believe I will have a cup with you, though. Missed my coffee at home this morning. Mrs. Peavy ill? No, just in an ill humor. What's that? Mrs. Peavy and I went down to return our new parrot, but we didn't get away with it. What do you mean? The man said he wouldn't take it back because it's been used. A used parrot? Seems there isn't much of a market for used parrots. Peavy, that's ridiculous. Not the way the man explained it. If a parrot spends time in a house, it could pick up expressions that a new owner might not care for. Yeah, I see. To be perfectly frank with you, our parrot could be a good deal more respectful to Mrs. Peavy than it is. <laughs> yeah, a parrot that would be banned in Boston. Oh, it can't be that bad. <laughs> uh, no. How's everything in your house, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, everything's going to be all right, I guess. I understand Bronco's going out of town on business. Yeah, I read the letter about it. You don't see him. Came to my house and I opened it by mistake. Bronco was a little upset about it. Hmm, I guess he was. Say, it'd be a nice gesture if I invited Marjorie to stay over at my house while Bronco's away. He'll appreciate that. Hmm, I think so. Sure. I'll tell him I'm going to pack up Marjorie and the twins and move them back home. Well, I, I wouldn't put it that way if I were you. What do you mean? Well, Bronco might think you're being pushy. Oh, Bronco knows I'd never think of interfering in his personal affairs. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, Marjorie, it's nice to have you back home, even if it's only for a couple of days. Well, thank you, Auntie. Nice to enjoy Bertie's cooking again. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody like another hot biscuit? I would. Okay, Leroy. Anybody else? Yeah, not me, thanks. No, thanks, Bertie. Then I'll take three. <laughs> Leroy. Just complimenting Bertie's cooking. Thank you, Starboarder. That's okay. <laughs> Leroy, you find as many excuses for eating as Bronco. Yeah, if he was here, he'd keep me company. Yeah, I'm sorry Bronco got away before I had a chance to see him. Well, he didn't decide to go until he got a letter today. Oh, I know about that. Unky, what if Bronco should phone me tonight? He doesn't know I'm over here. Well, do you think he will, my dear? <laughs> I remember when Mr. Bronco was calling her every 30 minutes. Well, that was before they were married. 
Now he's probably glad to get out of town. <laughs> oh, Leroy. Unky, I'm beginning to worry about nobody being in the house. Hey, why don't I go over there and spend the night? I can take my pup tent and camp right in the middle of the floor. Pup tent? No kidding. Maybe I can get credit for it from the Boy Scouts. Really, Unky, I don't know if I should have come. Now, don't tell me you're going to wake up them twins and pack them back home tonight. Well... Now, Marjorie, if you're going to worry, I can go over there myself and listen for the phone. Would you? Sure. I'll get Phoebe to come over and keep me company. Wonderful. If Bronco phoned and nobody was there, he'd wonder what happened to us. I can answer a phone. Of course, the Boy Scouts don't give you any credit for that. All right, Leroy. I can see myself now. Crawling out of my pup tent in the middle of the night, groping for the telephone with no light but the embers from my little campfire on the carpet. <laughs> Roy, I'll go. It's very comfortable here in Bronco's house. And if he should phone, I'll be on the job. He's pretty blustery out tonight. Maybe that's why Peavy's so late. It's going to be a good night to sleep. Hope Bronco's bed's comfortable. He's coming! Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, come in, Peavy. Just wondering about you. Uh, sorry I was delayed, but my income tax man came by the pharmacy and I had to spend a little time with him. Oh? And spend a little money with Uncle Sam. Do you have to transact that business after hours? Uncle Sam will do business with you any time that you want to pay him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me take your things, Peavy. A little rough out, isn't it? Mm, yeah. I would have gone home, but Mrs. Peavy is spending the evening with Winston Churchill. Uh, Winston Churchill? She's reading his latest book. Oh. And when she's reading, she doesn't pay much attention to me. Yeah, I see. Uh, shall we play a game of pinochle? But I'm just thinking on the way over, Mr. Gildersleeve, if it suits you, we might look at television. They're showing a movie I haven't seen in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> now, sure, let's turn it on, people. Uh, what channel? Yeah, it's on four. Yeah, there we are. Nice set. Yes, but Broncos have a little trouble with reception, he tells me. Well, weather conditions could have something to do with it. Hmm. All we're getting is snow. Yeah, we can open the window and see that. <laughs> By George, I'm going to make a few adjustments on this set. You think you should, Mr. Gildersleeve? Why not? Take it with mine all the time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> One of those tubes doesn't look like it's putting out much. I'll take it out and check it. Uh, don't you think you should turn off the set first? Oh, yeah. Good idea. Now I'll take out the tube. Zeke, it's hot. Well, it must have been working. Yeah, I can't hold it, TV. Whoop! Yeah, that takes care of television. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's pinochle. Okay, well. well. I found some baked ham in the refrigerator. <laughs> Made a few sandwiches. Oh, that's nice. So we can eat while we play. Yeah, well, and I'll deal the cards. And I'll deal the sandwiches. It's a nice place Bronco has here. Yes, indeed. He'll be surprised if he phones to talk to Marjorie and finds me here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to come over, though. Mm, you hear that, Mr. Gildersleeve? Sounds like somebody on the phone. I wonder who could be at this hour of the night. Marge, honey! Come home! Bronco! Oh, Marge! Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mr. Peavy. Yeah, hello, Bronco. Bronco, what are you doing here? I might, a might ask you the same thing. Where are Marge and the twins? Where's my family? Well, I sent them over to my house. Oh? I thought I'd take charge over here. I see. Well, what happened, my boy? Why aren't you in Center City? The road's closed. I had to come back. Oh, well, it's too bad. Would you care for a snack? Your ham's very good, Bronco. <laughs> I'm glad you and Mr. Gildersleeve are enjoying it. But I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt your little game now. Well, yeah, I should be on my way. Oh, Phoebe doesn't have to hurry, does he, Bronco? Mr. Gildersleeve, it's late, and I have to go over and get Marge and the twins. Oh, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't? Well, as you say, it's late. The twins and Marjorie are sound asleep, and you know how Marjorie hates to be disturbed. All right, all right. 
I'm a little tired and put out anyway. I'll just look at the late news and television and go to bed. What am I stepping on? Uh, that's your television tube. <laughs> My television tube? Yeah, I was going to sweep it up when it cooled off. I took out the tube to check it and dropped it. If PB wanted to see a late movie. I didn't want to see it that bad. <laughs> oh, well, I'll see the newspaper in the morning. I think I'll turn in. Hey, wait a minute, Bronco. I'll get my things out of your room. My pajamas are in there. Oh, I didn't know you planned to sleep in my bed. Yeah. Of course, I could go home now, but the twins are sleeping in my room. Well, that's all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll sleep in the twins' room. No, no, no. Let me sleep in the twins' room. Mr. Gildersleeve, my mind's made up. Good night. Good night, Miss Peavy. Uh, good night. Good night. Peavy, do you think I should sleep in his bed? <laughs> I think you should have stood in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Say, Mom, how long has it been since your family has enjoyed homemade popcorn, salted just the way you like it and temptingly covered with melted parquet? To show you the easy way to fix popcorn, the Kraft folks are making a very special offer. For a short time, you'll get a package of Jolly Time popcorn absolutely free when you buy a bottle of Kraft oil at your grocer's. A three-ounce package of Jolly Time popcorn is wrapped around the Kraft oil bottle, enough to make three quarts of the finest popcorn you've ever tasted. Jolly Time is the best-selling popcorn in the world. It's the corn that's guaranteed to pop every single kernel. And when you pop corn in Kraft oil, you're doing it the quick, never-fail way. Just pour a little Kraft oil into your skillet or popper, turn on the heat, and soon you'll be feasting on popcorn that's warm and fluffy without a trace of oiliness. Don't forget the treats on Kraft. Just pick up a bottle of Kraft Oil with its gift package of Jolly Time Popcorn. At the same time, you can also get a separate certificate worth $3 toward the purchase of a whirlwind electric corn popper. You'll find these certificates wherever you see a Kraft Oil display. Both the popcorn and the certificate are absolutely free when you buy that wonderful salad and cooking oil, Kraft Oil. Well, when Mr. Bronco was called out of town on business, Mr. Gilsey had Miss Margie and the twins stay over here while he took care of things at their house. Bertie heard somebody drive up late last night and couldn't wait to ask, Mr. Gilsey, what happened? You, Bronco came back home unexpectedly, Bertie. He did? Ain't that nice? Well, he seemed to be upset because I was there and his family wasn't. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, why didn't he come over here? Well, it was so late we both agreed we wouldn't disturb Marjorie and the twins. Oh, I think you should have told Miss Marjorie he's here. Well, I'm going to do that first thing, Bertie. I don't want any more misunderstandings. No, sir. Somehow, Bronco always has the impression I'm trying to run things for him. I wonder how he got that. <laughs> this is not a laughing matter, Bertie. Oh, no, sir. Hi. Good morning, Leroy. Hello, my boy. What isn't a laughing matter? Leroy, sit down and eat your prunes. I know they aren't a laughing matter. What is? Young man, this is something that concerns just Bronco and me. You mean Bronco is no laughing matter? What are we hiding? Good morning. Good morning, Miss Marjorie. I'd better go get breakfast. Hi. Hello, my dear. Well, who's hiding what? You, nobody's hiding a thing. Marjorie. Ah, get in! You get the breakfast, Bertie. I'll get the phone. Uh, Marjorie, I want to talk to you about Bronco. He's a little upset with me. Oh, don't be silly, Yankee. We're both very fond of you. Hey, it's Bronco on the phone. Whoop. Bronco, is he calling from Center City? He's phoning from your house. From our house? Yes, indeed. I was about Archie, to... did you know he's home? Well... He came home while Mr. Peavy and I were playing pinochle. And... You mean you sat there playing pinochle and didn't tell me my husband was home? Well, it was late, and I didn't think he should disturb you and the children. Not disturb me? 
Oh, so now you've taken it upon yourself to tell Bronco he can't see me. But I... That's why I wanted you to be over there so you could tell me if he called. I, I was going to. When? Sometime today? Or wait until tomorrow? Marjorie, don't you get upset with me the way Bronco is. Hey, Aunt! Bronco wants to know why he can't talk to his wife. I'm coming. <laughs> Uncle Mort, this is the last straw. I better grab it and run. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? You know, I'd like some hot black coffee first, and then some breakfast. Yeah, well. Get away from home a little fast this morning, didn't you? Yeah, I'll say. I made the mistake of not running through the snow last night to tell Marjorie that Bronco was back. Yeah, a long time ago, I decided to tell Mrs. Peavy everything she was likely to find out. <laughs> you know, I guess that keeps you out of trouble. No, but it helps. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't know why I should be on the defensive. I had nothing but the best intentions toward the kids. Well, sometimes you don't get much credit for good intentions. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right, Pete. It's easy to see that I'm not appreciated. Yeah, I've done a lot for those kids. Yes, you've even overdone it. <laughs> you bet. What would they do if I moved away from them? <laughs> Dance in the street? <laughs> no, Phoebe. Yeah, I remember how I felt when that letter came and I thought they were leaving me. Yeah, I might just move to another state. That'd show them. Oh, you wouldn't move out of the state. Well, what would the next water commissioner do? Well, he... I might move as far as Center City and commute. You're going to a lot of trouble, aren't you, just to prove they can get along without you? No, don't fool yourself. Marjorie and Bronco are very fond of me. And they'd come around in a minute if I dropped the hint that I might move at least to to the other side of the town. Well, you're getting closer to home. Welcome back to Summerfield, Mr. <laughs> Younger, please. Yeah, you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. You know what they say. You never miss the water until the well runs dry. Yeah, but a lot of old wells have been abandoned. <laughs> By George, I'm going to get the little family back together. They say the best defense is a good offense. They're both angry at me. You know, I'll get the jump on them and go over and pretend I'm angry at them. Sort of a sneaky trick to make them think I'm going to move. But I have to teach him a lesson. Oh, hello, Auntie. Marjorie, I want you to hear what I have to say. What do you have to say? Goodbye. Goodbye? Are you going out of town? Well, I thought about that. But I decided to settle for the outskirts. What are you talking about? Well, I'm just about fed up with the way things are going around here. Leroy and I are moving. Oh, is that all you have to say? Oh? Come in, Unky. Well, I don't have much time, but thank you. Isn't this a sudden decision? It's the only decision. You know, I don't have to tell you why I've made it. It's obvious that we aren't getting along. Oh, well, we have our little flare-up. You know, I'll say. But we've had the last one. I'll sell the house, and Leroy and I'll take a little cottage at the edge of town, where we won't be in your way. Well, Anki, if we've hurt you... No, no, don't think I'm hurt. I've got to hide like an elephant. You sound so serious. Well, I am serious. If Franco doesn't want to say goodbye, that's up to him. Oh, for heaven's sake, Anki. Of course, if he does want to come over and say goodbye, I'll be home all afternoon. Oh, I'm sure he'll want to see you the minute he gets here. <laughs> So I completely turned the tables on him, Bertie. Marjorie couldn't stand the thought of my moving away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Gilsey, they couldn't get you out of this house with a derrick. No, don't fool yourself. I can be pushed too far. Yes, sir. You just wait. Brock will be over here trying to talk me out of going. <laughs> well, somebody on the porch now. Yeah, I knew it. He's coming over to beg me to stay. You better let him in. I can't keep a straight face. Yeah, all right. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Bronco. 
I suppose you want to come in. Well, when I got home and talked to Marjorie, I thought I'd come over and see what this is all about. No, Bronco, there's no reason to reproach yourself. I've just decided it'll be best for everybody concerned if I move away. Oh? Hello, Bertie. Hello, Mr. Bronco. Bronco, did you hear me? I said I was moving away. Marge told me. She did, huh? I just came over to see if you were joking. No, 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 I'm not joking. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, perhaps I haven't been as cooperative as, at times as I could be. <laughs> I've got him. <laughs> but this time I want to do everything I can. I think I can find a buyer for your house right away. Zeke! <laughs> in fact, I'm so anxious to cooperate in this matter, I'll do it without a commission. Yeah, but Bronco! And I think I've got just the cottage for you on the outskirts of town. Way out. No, no Bronco! <laughs> just a minute. Why don't I run back home and get my list of prospects? We'll have you out of here in no time. You Wait a minute, Bronco! What? Confounded, if that's the way you feel, I won't go. You won't? Hey, Marge! Yes, Bronco? Was she waiting out there? I got Mr. Gildersleeve to admit he wouldn't move. You did? Wonderful, Uncle. Whoop! I've been tricked. <laughs> yeah, but I like it. Yes. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Just a reminder about Kraft Oil's wonderful offer to give you a three-ounce package of Jolly Time popcorn absolutely free with every bottle of Kraft Oil you buy. Kraft makes this offer to prove that the easiest way to popcorn is the Kraft Oil way. Next time you're shopping, be sure to get your gift package of Jolly Time popcorn. It's free when you buy a bottle of Kraft Oil. Straighten out with Marge and Bronco, Honk. Yes, indeed, my boy. I guess you're sorry you ever suggested Marge and the twins come over here. Well, as it turned out, it was a great idea. Cleared the atmosphere, and the little family is closer than ever. Uh, Miss Gill, please. Yes, Bertie? You know them new shoes you bought last week? Yeah, what about them? I'm afraid I have to tell you they've shrunk a little. They shrunk? The twins were sailing them in the bathtub, pretending they was gunboats. Zeke! Great idea you had, Honk. Huh? Oh, well... Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Chetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Lee Millar, and Dick LeGrand. Musical composition by Jack Beacon. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too. But here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. <laughs> play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC Radio Network. Mm.